Hello children, myself Divya Sharma from Shiv Jyoti Educational Group Kota. Today in video part 1, I will be doing the explanation of chapter number 20 that is Gandhiji leads the nation. Now, in this chapter, we will focus on the contribution of Gandhiji towards the freedom struggle. As we have learnt in the previous chapter that after returning to India in the year 1915, Gandhiji fought against the racial indiscrimination in South Africa by, the, by adopting the means of Satyagraha which follows the principle of truth and non-violence. Now, when he came to India, he wanted to know more about the people. So, he started traveling to various parts of the country. And to know about the people, what he, he was very sad to see the position of the people. They were very poor. And the social evils which were being practiced in the Indian society, as we read in the previous chapter, like child marriage, sati pratha, caste system, these all social evils kept the Indian society backward. So, and he also ob observed that uh, the people of low caste were being treated as untouchables. These low caste people were treated as untouchables and he realized that to unify the people, he has to uh, fight against these social evils. So, what he did? He named the untouchables as Harijans, which means people of God. He started working towards this aim and he quickly won the support of many of the people in India. Now here you have your first internal question children, you can write down what your internal question number one is what do you mean by the term by the term Harijan the answer is Harijan means people of God. Okay? So, the term Harijan means people of God. This was your first internal question children. You can write it in your books as well. Now, next topic is the Rollet Act. It was passed in London on 10th March 1919. So, the next topic is the Rollet Acts and the Jallianwala Bagh Massacre. You have read in the previous chapter that after the World War I, the British became more harsh towards the Indians. They imposed new taxes and also passed new laws to suppress the Indians. So, Rollet Act was one of the uh, laws which was passed and the president of the Rollet Committee was Sir Sidney Rollet. Now, what is the Rollet Act? The British government had the authority to arrest and imprison people suspected of being terrorists. In the Rollet Act, under these laws, they could arrest anyone without a trial who is being suspected of being a terrorist. Now, and this was only the time when Gandhiji launched the Satyagraha movement. As I told you, the Satyagraha movement was based on the principle of truth and non-violence. And in 1919, the British passed the Rollet Act. But Mahatma Gandhi opposed the enactment of Rollet Act because he believed he was against the act because he said that people could not be arrested on just the baseless suspicions. Now, Gandhiji asked the people to oppose these laws. Gandhiji uh, asked the people to oppose these laws. So, the demonstrations and meetings were held all over the country. 
and gandhi ji's satyagraha movement now had number of followers and what happened the jallianwala bagh massacre took place on april 1919 massacre is brutally killing of people now what happened in this incident a public meeting was held to protest against the arrest of dr satyapal and dr saifuddin kichlu now in the jallianwala bagh massacre it was attended by 10000 men women and children and on orders of general dyer he ordered his british soldiers to open fire at the crowd and they blocked the only one exit of the park so no one could go out of the park to rescue themselves and thousands of people were killed in the incident and the reported casualties were 1516 which included women and children now nation was shocked at the brutality of the attack it was a very uh, massive in, uh, incident uh, which shocked the whole world then the next topic is the non cooperation movement it was also launched by gandhi ji in the year 1920 and it aimed at self government that is to obtain full independence from the british rule gandhi ji launched non cooperation movement in 1920 to protest against the massacre the shootings and the british government's attitude towards the indian people convinced gandhi ji that now india must get independent from the british rule so what he did he launched the non cooperation movement and he asked the people not to cooperate with the british and asked them to boycott the british educational institutions completely so indians working for the british government resigned lawyers boycotted the court and the indian children were withdrawn from the british educational institutions and with the non cooperation movement the, the swadeshi movement also became the part of the non cooperation movement and as we have read that it says foreign goods were totally boycotted use of indian handicraft items was encouraged use of hand woven clothes and khadi was popularized all type of british goods were boycotted in the swadeshi movement and britishers now tried to suppress the movement through violence they wanted to suppress the movement through using violent means but the people stayed non violent and firm uh, even if they were beaten brutally by the british soldiers now the chauri chaura incident The non-cooperation movement in Chauri Chaura, Uttar Pradesh, became violent. The people set fire to a police station, killing 22 policemen. Now, in Chauri Chaura incident, uh, what happened? The people became violent, but Gandhi ji was against this violence. He wanted the non-cooperation movement to be uh, with. following the peaceful means but the people in uttar pradesh became violent and so what happened all this violence was against gandhi ji's principle gandhi ji immediately withdrew the non cooperation movement he immediately called it off as he firmly believed that the movement could be only successful if it was non violent now some of the uh, leaders of the non cooperation movement were dr rajendra prasad sardar vallabh bhai patel sarojini naidu pandit jawahar lal nehru and moti lal nehru now next topic is the civil disobedience movement civil disobedience movements aim at refusing to obey the laws commands and orders of the british government and it was started by breaking the salt law 
विद द ग्रोइंग डिमांड ऑफ पूर्ण स्वराज विच मीन्स कंप्लीट इंडिपेंडेंस द सिविल डिसोबीडियंस मूवमेंट वॉज स्टार्टेड विद सम ऑफ द अदर प्रोमिनेंट लीडर्स लाइक सरोजिनी नायडू मौलाना अब्दुल कलाम आजाद पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल मोहम्मद अली जिना नाउ ही कॉल्ड इन वॉट ही डिड वेन ही लॉन्च द सिविल डिसोबीडियंस मूवमेंट ही कॉल्ड इंडियंस टू रिफ्यूज टू पे टैक्सेज ऑन सॉल्ट एंड एज द ब्रिटिश फॉर्बेड द इंडियंस फ्रॉम मेकिंग द सॉल्ट सो ही स्टार्टेड द movement by breaking the salt law first indians were banned from preparing salt from the sea water so gandhi ji launched the salt satyagraha on 12th march 1930 he organized a peaceful march from sabarmati ashram in ahmedabad to dandi on the sea shore where a large number of people took part in the march and he called it as dandi march they broke the salt law by making salt from the sea water at dandi gandhi ji and his followers made the salt by evaporating the sea water though gandhi ji was arrested but the civil disobedience movement spread throughout the country now the next topic is the simon commission and the demand for purna swaraj simon commission why it was formed it was formed to analyze and resolve the law and order situation in india now the british wanted uh, to make some changes in the way india was being governed so in the year 1928 a committee under sir john simon was formed but there was no indian in the commission so angry indians boycotted the commission and they decided to stage demonstration by holding out protest rallies and taking out marches marches and then they shouted the slogan simon go back this slogan was given by lala lajpat rai and the congress now decided to demand purna swaraj or complete independence for india then our next topic is world war 2 and the quit india movement world war 2 broke out in the year 1939 the quit india movement demanded the end of the british rule the british arrested tens of thousands of people but could not crush the movement and finally they were uh, forced to introduce reforms and then they passed the government of india act in 1935 which said it was passed by the british but the powers still remained with the british government in this elections were held throughout the country and in most of the provinces congress won the elections and formed its government but still the main power remained in the hands of the british government then world war 2 broke out in the year 1939 the british declared war on india's behalf without talking to the indian leaders in protest the congress ministers in the provinces resigned the indian soldiers were sent to the war front india was brought to war without its consent as i told you the british declared war on india's behalf and uh, indians there was no consent of the indians the congress declared that india would join the war until the british granted them complete independence so the talks were held but the talks failed and under uh, and congress under the leadership of gandhi ji launched the quit india movement in the year 1942 a civil disobedience movement launched by gandhi ji it was also launched by gandhi ji now we'll uh, take up the next topic 
that is Subhash Chandra Bose and Indian National Army. Okay. Subhash Chandra Bose and the Indian National Army. Subhash Chandra Bose had been elected President of Indian National Congress twice. He was lovingly called Netaji. He was convinced that the British would never leave India peacefully. So he went to Japan from where he organized an army of 40,000 Indian soldiers. He called it as Azad Hind Forj or the Indian National Army. You can underline this in your books as well children. The Indian National Army fought against the British on the northeast borders of India. Initially they pushed back the British but finally the British defeated the Indian National Army. Finally the British were able to defeat the Indian National Army. Now here you have your second internal question children. Write down who was who was known as Netaji. The answer is Subhash Chandra Bose. This is your second internal question. Now the next topic is India becomes free. By the time World War II ended in 1945, the British realized that they could no longer keep the Indians in their control. Now after the World War II, the British realized that if Indians become united and now they can fight against us and now they realize that they cannot keep the Indians more under their control. The Quit India Movement and the Indian National Army had shaken them. They agreed to move out of India and started discussions with the Congress and the Muslim League. Muslim League was a political party which was established in the year 1906 and it demanded, Muslim, uh, demanded a separate nation for Hindus and Muslims. The divide and rule policy of the British had been successful in dividing the Hindus and Muslims. Now the divide and rule policy which the British people adopted, they were successful in dividing the Hindus and Muslims. The Muslim League under the leadership of Muhammad Ali Jinnah demanded a separate nation for the Muslims. Gandhiji was against the division of India, but Gandhiji was against this division. Though India got its independence on 15th August 1947, but was divided into two nations, India and Pakistan. We got uh, independence in the year 1947, but India was divided into two nations, India and Pakistan. Gandhiji was heartbroken, his dreams of united India had been shattered. He was very sad and uh, his dream of seeing a united India was being shattered. Now we will quickly have a look at the road to independence, some of the important incidents. 1857, first war of independence. In the year 1885, Indian National Congress was formed. 1919, the Jallianwala Bagh massacre took place. 1920, non-cooperation movement was launched. In the year 1929, declaration of Poonne Swaraj, that means complete independence. In 1930, Gandhiji took out the Dandi March to break the SALT law. In 1942, uh, Gandhiji launched the Quit India Movement. And finally, in the year 1947, India got independence. So children, this was all about the explanation of the chapter. Read the chapter well. Thank you.